Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward, and this is Face to Face. Our guest this week is actress Paulina Alexis. Her portrayal as Willie Jack has made her one of the breakout stars on the show Reservation Dogs. Paulina was cast in Tracy Deer's award-winning film Beans about the so-called Oka crisis. She also had a role in the blockbuster movie Ghostbusters Afterlife. Paulina is a member of the Alexis Nakoda Sioux Nation in Alberta. Paulina, thanks so much for being on the show. Super happy to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. Um, you know, Reservation Dogs is likely my favorite show on TV right now, and Willie Jack is an absolute standout. How do you feel about the, the success of the show and the reaction to Willie Jack? I mean, since I got the audition, I knew it was going to blow up. Like, I got it probably like November 2019. And that was a long time ago. And like, I remember me and DeFerrell were like, yo, he's got to audition. Taika Waititi, we have to audition for it. We have to get it, man. And then like, slowly came up, like second cuts. And then they flew us out to Ka Cali to go audition live. And there was just eight of us. And I knew like it was going to blow up. From reading like the scripts, like the audition, I was like, man, I have to get this. It's going to be so good. The reaction part was unexpected, but so expected at the same time. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, we're a little behind here in Canada with the airing of the show. Just uh, wrapped up season two last week. Uh, is, is there a different reaction to the show down south compared to uh, in Canada? Um, yeah, like I get noticed a lot more in the States than I do like in Canada. Really? Yeah. Like, it's like, no one really cares back home, but like when I'm in the States, it's like a lot of people, like I get noticed, like even like going in a Walmart or something, I'm like, yo, mom. <laughs> That's crazy though. Like it's, it gets so over overwhelming at times. Like I forget that I'm even on the show until like someone will come up to me and be like, are you that girl, Willie Jack? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the show certainly been a success, renewed for a uh, third season. Um, Lots of interviews for you, lots of TV, photo shoots, stuff like that. Uh, has that been uh, a bit to get used to, a bit overwhelming? Like, at first, when, like, we first started doing shows, like, after the season one came out, and, like, I got, like, a stylist, and, like, we'd go to, like, award shows, and I'd be like, oh, that's why, like, everyone looks, like, so good all the time, because they have stylists and, like, makeup artists and, like, hairstylists. So that was, like, a little... Getting took me a while to get used to, but now it's like a piece of cake now. So it was like overwhelming at first, but like you take breaks and you ground yourself, like you'll be good. How do you uh, help ground yourself? Um, my horse, the horses a lot. Like that's why I do like Indian relay and I play hockey because like those things like keep me sane all the time, and like my family, of course. Yeah. Uh, your mom's here with us. Uh, pleasure to meet her as well. Uh, does she do a lot of traveling with you? Yeah, yeah. When like I don't want to like go somewhere by myself, I'm like, Mom, come, like, come here. <laughs> yeah. I always tell her like, like if I'm going to like Cali like alone for like an award show, I'll be like, Mom, might as well just come. Like, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's just me. Definitely want to talk about Indian Relay, but um, you initially had uh, tried out for the role of Valora, the character played by Devery Jacobs. Uh, were cast as Willie Jack, which was uh, originally written as a male character. Are you pretty happy with the way that it's all turned out, though? Yes, I'm so happy. Like, I knew I had to get on that show, and, like, Willie Jack was, like, just felt like it was meant to be, like, with Willie Jack. And, like, the audition process was crazy. Like, auditioning for Laura and knowing I was going against Devery Jacobs was, like, really scary for me. Because, like, I watched her since I was, like, a kid. And, like, she's, like, always been, like, my idol. And, like, when they um, got back to me and they said that the showrunner really thinks you're funny for uh, one of the male leads, Willie Jack, we'd like you to read for him. And then I'm like, okay, whatever. I just read the roles that the... Ugh, read the script like and then I just did it how I would say it myself and like I think that's what they really like. 
So how relatable is the character Willie Jack to Paulina? I mean, I don't want to get like too much into it, but I pretty much am Willie Jack. Like, I like everything that, like when we read the scripts, like sometimes I would barely like even have lines and then I'd be like, Sterling, do you want me to say something? And he'll be like, say whatever you want. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And then, like, I'll just like say something and like they'll all like laugh or like, there's like scripts as long as I'm like going with like the intention of the script and like do my own thing then I'm good. Like Sterling said that you could, I could say whatever I want whenever I want, even though there's a script. So like, yeah. We uh, just had uh, Halloween here and uh, not just this year, but in, in previous years as well, people have been dressing up as uh, Willie Jack. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Oh, it's so cute. Like I seen this one picture on Facebook of like this little this little girl dressed up as Willie Jack and like it's crazy. Like now like these kids have like someone to look up to. Like I never had that growing up. Like I don't know, it's just like so like amazing to know that like kids like look up to you and like they're like dressing up as like your mini me, like that's crazy. That's like it feels like good, like in my heart. Like even like seeing like like little friend groups dressed up as like the whole gang, like there's Barry, Willie Jack and Cheese, like I think that's that's sick. And like it feels really good to like know that little kids can look up at the screen and see themselves. Like you said, you, you knew you wanted the role and that it would blow up. Did you think it would blow up to the point where people would be dressing up as the character? I did not even think of that part. I didn't think it was, I didn't think that far into it. I, I knew it was, it'd be big, but I didn't know it'd be like... Uh, Paulina, we got much more to talk about here, including your other projects that you've been a part of. We're just going to step aside for a quick break, and then we'll continue the conversation here on Face to Face with Paulina Alexis. Stick around. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is actress Paulina Alexis. And Paulina, the list of projects that you've been involved with so far are, are certainly impressive. Was acting something that you knew at a young age you, you wanted to get into? Yes, acting and like films. I've always loved movies since I was a kid. Like back then, we didn't have like phones or anything. All we had was like our imagination and outside. And like my dad. He owns a little production company, so he has, like, this office of, like, cameras and, like, computers. And, like, as a kid, like, me and my brothers would go and, like, steal his cameras and, like, go make our own skits with our cousins. I remember me and my cousin used to make, like, little Lord of the Rings skits, Mari skits, uh, Power Rangers, and, like, Mortal Kombat and stuff like that. I feel like we have a lot of home videos of, like, just me and my brothers, like, just going action, cut, and, like like bunch of different scenes and like this unedited like yeah it's like acting is something I've always seen myself doing as a kid but like I never like said it out loud because like we didn't have any role models like at the time yeah sure there was like Adam Beach and like Gary Farmer like Eddie Spears all the legends and like but like I never like with reservation dogs, it's like we're finally telling, representing ourselves in a truthful way and telling our own stories instead of like just following a script of what other, how other people think we are. So, yeah. Acting, like getting reservation dogs is like my dream role because like I basically get to play myself and like it's like, I get to represent like all Turtle Island as well and like yeah. Does your dad still cast you in his productions? Oh uh, yeah, he like well, with his production company he'd like go to like powwows and like interview drummers and record all the dances and like make a video for like the res or something and then like he'd get paid and then like he'd like get me and my brothers to like go sell round dance CDs or like help him with like all like his equipment and like 
like lighting and stuff like that. So like I've been really familiar and I've always been in front of the camera since I was like really small. So great experience for sure. Uh, one of your first roles was the in the massively successful Ghostbusters uh, franchise. Uh, some of the biggest names in Hollywood were involved with Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, what was it like I guess going from uh, some of those productions that your family were doing to the set of Ghostbusters? That was crazy when I found out I got Ghostbusters when I was auditioning for it. I didn't think it was actually Ghostbusters like the, the OG Ivan Reitman, Jason Reitman. Like I didn't even do my research until like after I met Jason and I was like, Mom, that's really him. And like a couple weeks later we found out that I got it. And then once I went over there, like just seeing their huge, like big budget production, like it's like like all the, the wires, the equipment, I was like FaceTiming my brothers on the low, like just trying to show them like look at all these huge ass cameras. Yeah, it was crazy, like, going from that to Beans was an experience to remember, because then um, I, went to, I went to Res Dogs after, and I met the Feral uh, in Beans, because we played siblings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty dope. I get to meet a bunch of new people and, like, call family now. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I finally got to see uh, Beans yesterday. That's uh, director Tracy Deer's semi-autobiographical uh, autobiographical film about the so-called Oka crisis or the Gunasatage resistance. The film won Best Picture at the 2021 Canadian Screen Awards, which is basically the Canadian Oscars. Uh, pretty big difference uh, going from, you know, the, the difference between Ghostbusters and working on a small, mostly Canadian Indigenous indie. It was so fun, though. I had so much fun. Tracy uh, Deer, the director, she also let me sneak in a few improv lines as well. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty dope experience. Do you think uh, Indigenous-led films should be getting Ghostbuster-type budgets? Yeah, why not? We have like the best stories to tell. Uh, Reservation Dogs, uh, like you said, great cast uh, and great uh, guests, uh, recurring uh, characters. Uh, like you say, some legends, uh, Wes Studi, Gary Farmer, Podemski's uh, massive list. Uh, what's it like on the set? With all the legends? With just the, the, it looks like it'd be a pretty good time with the legends and the cast you have and oh. the whole crew. What's it like on set, like for Red Dog specifically? Uh, it was really fun. Like we'd always just like mess around and play games. Like no matter what, like where you are, you always like hear Sterling, like the director, Sterling Harjo, laughing, and his laugh is so contagious. It sounds like a hyena. Like I'll go ha ha, and I'll start laughing. Like you'll hear him, or like when you're doing a scene and I'm like, you're improving, you don't know what to say, and then you hear you hear that laugh. Like you just know like it's gonna be good. Like the scene, you just know we killed it, and like. We played like this game called uh, shit ass. That was like a thing like kind of started off in season one. It's like where we write down shit ass on like a piece of tape or like a note, and we'd go and like stick it on people without them knowing, and like we'd take pictures of it and then we'd post it. And like, yeah, it was just so fun. We did like so many things, and like even after it, we'd like hang out, go like bowling and stuff. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm getting too much into it, but yeah. Seems like it would be. Um, you kind of touched on it, but uh, you know, growing up, did you see or uh, many people on TV or in the movies that you felt like were uh, representing you or, or where you're from? Not really. Yeah, we've seen like native people, but mostly like stereotypical like native people. Like I wanted to see like raw like res life like something that like you actually see and now that reservation dogs is is out like like young kids like don't need to worry about it and they think like they think that it's normal where then when i was growing up it was like a struggle to like even find role models at all so yeah feels really good uh, we just had uh, producer Bird Running Water on the show, and we were talking about a study in the U.S. by Illuminative. They found 
0.4% of the characters on TV and in films were uh, Indigenous. Do you feel like we've reached a, a turning point where we're going to see those numbers go up? Yeah, well, definitely. Hopefully, because, like, it's hard to even, like, spot a Native person being an extra on, like, a regular movie. Like, I'm not racist or anything, but, like, we're, like, pretty much the only ones who are, like, invisible. It's like we're not even there. Like... I don't know how to explain it. Like, if you were to watch, like, a regular movie, tell me if you see, like, a native extra in the back. Tell me if you see that, and, mm -hmm. like, you'll just know. Yeah, I feel like that 0.4% uh, is just basically the cast of Reservation Dogs. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, too. Like, yeah. uh, Paulina, uh, more to talk about here, but we're going to step aside for one more quick break, and then we'll continue the conversation here on Face to Face with Paulina Alexis. Stick around. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week, we're lucky to have Paulina Alexis with us and wanted to ask you about Indian relay racing and how you got into that and why it's something that's still important for you. Indian relay, where can I start? I just started riding like recently. Like I didn't really, I didn't grow up with horses at all, like in my life. Um, so like when I got older and I got my own money, I'm like, that's it, I'm learning how to ride, I don't care, like, I'm gonna do relay. I probably watched relay, like, about two, three years ago for the first time, and I fell in love with it. I was like, yo, I'm doing this, I don't care, I'm doing it. And, like, I finally, um, got enough bucks to get myself a horse, and I just kept on training myself every single day, every single day. I fall off, I can't even imagine how many times, I can't even count how many times I fell off my horse and like and like hurt myself my back's all broken and stuff and like I like tore so many like muscles and I always get back on because it's like it's the adrenaline like I'm like kind of like an adrenaline junkie so when I seen relay and Indian relay I knew I had to do it I was like I really like that like that seems like something I would do and like I just didn't stop till I did it. And like also it keeps me busy. Like when I'm not working, like that's what I love about my horse. Like it gives me like a responsibility and like a sense of purpose when like I'm not working and like feels good. Like it makes me feel more grounded as well. Like I'm just there like with my horse all the time. And yeah. Nice, love that. But, uh, you know, does your agent or insurance company uh, say to you, uh, maybe uh, time to put a pause on this uh, if you're falling off and hurting yourself? Yeah, like, uh, not real. no, they, they support me all the way. But, like, um, they would say, like, just don't hurt yourself because we need Willie Jack. We can't get another Willie Jack. Just don't, like, you know, fall off and, like, get too bad, like. Like during, while we were filming season two, I would take off like when, we, when I wasn't working and I'd go ride like horses. And they'd be like, don't, don't hurt yourself and stuff like that. I don't even know if we're so that, but yeah. So if we see Willie Jack on crutches in one episode, we'll know <laughs> what the source of that was. You'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as we mentioned, thankfully Reservation Dogs is coming back for a third season. Uh, when you first started out on the show, did you think you'd be making it to a, a third season? I like to think yes, but I would never wanted to think it too deep. I was like, okay, we're doing this. And like, I just didn't want to like, but like, damn, third season already? That's crazy. And like, knowing everyone and like, we're all basically family now. And I know that they're going to be in my life forever now because of the show, especially. So that's a really good thing that like stays with me as well. And I think we're starting off in Cali this year. The uh, feeling like a family that definitely uh, comes across on screen as well. Yeah. Uh, what are you most proud of with the show? What I'm most proud of with the show is like what we were talking about, like with the kids, like it's all about the youth and like 
because they're like the future. They're the ones that are going to be writing these stories and making more movies when they get bigger. So being like, we're just scratching the surface right now. So like, I don't even know how to explain it, but like, to me, like this plays a really big part for the youth because I've never had role models growing up and like now they do. I think that is something I'm like most proud of. And like even like seeing all the costumes on Halloween. Yeah. Uh, I've seen interviews where you talked about uh, wanting to be a director. If, if you could create a film or a show, uh, yes. what would that be? I, that's one thing I always wanted to be too. Like when we'd make little skits when I was a kid, I'd, I'd be directing, acting, and like doing everything at once. So like directing is always something I knew I could do. And hopefully one day I, I could do that. And when I do make my own films. I have like lots of ideas right now and I don't want to say them. I don't want to get my ideas out there yet but like I would like to make comedy and like 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 realness like raw like raw funny and like just like wholesome at the same time like stuff like that. Are there uh, like you said Season three is coming, but are there any other uh, projects you have in the works right now? Yes, I have a couple. Um, what am I allowed to say, Mom? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. Feel free to. I mean, at least we, what we can't say, I've, I, mean, I forgot all about it, was, uh, was Bones and Crows, which is oh, going to yeah. be touring Bones the country Crows. right away. Bones and Crows, that's, that's one too. And um, I'm just going to say it. Uh, I have this n role coming up. It's called We To Go. And it's like, and I forgot what it, how you call it. It's like the sculpture animation thing. The right. Cool. Like, and that's so cool. That's something I always wanted to do. Like, you ever watch Claymation, Coraline? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Claymation. Claymation. That's what it is. And that was so fun and so cool, like, to work on. Like, voice acting is, like, something I never even thought of doing. And, like, it was a very challenging experience. And it's, like, so fun. And, like, I want to do more voice acting as well. Nice. Yeah. Uh, just lastly here, I guess, uh, what advice do you have for the youth who might be looking at a career in film or television? I'd say love yourself and know your path. Stay away from drinking and too much partying because that's not going to get you anywhere. And yeah, as long as you know your path and stay away from that shit, all your dreams will come true. Great advice, uh, Pauline. It's uh, great to have you with us on the show. Appreciate you taking some time for us. Thank you so much. And that is all the time we have for this week. Of course, you can catch up on any episodes you may have missed by visiting our website, aptnnews.ca. And this episode and all of our past episodes are also available as podcasts. You can find those wherever you download your podcasts. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night. We'll see you back here next week.